This is Dr. Holt. In this problem, I have a, a beam. It's being supported right here. It has a cable attached out here that's 3.5 meters from A, and it goes back up into this direction, attaching to, say, some type of building. And what I want to do here is I want to find out what the tension is going to be in this rod through here, this red rod, as well as finding out what the force is going to be here at A. Also, this beam has a mass of 2 kilograms. So to solve a problem like this, always, always draw yourself a very detailed free by diagram. And I've already done that down below here. So I've, go ahead and get, need to add this force here, which is going to be the mass. So the mass is 2, I believe. Let's just double check that. It was 2. So the mass is 2. So the force of gravity that's pulling down on this is going to equal to 2 times 9.8 meters per second squared. All right, I've gone ahead and labeled the forces at A, which we have no idea what they are, is FAX and FAY. And what I'm going to do to solve this problem is I'm going to take a moment. And again, a moment is nothing more than the cross product of the distance times the force. And I'm going to take the moment around this point, because if I do, I only have one unknown. So I'll start doing that. Anything, also to note, anything that goes this direction here, we're going to make positive. Anything that makes the beam want to rotate back this way, we're going to make negative here. So I come over here, and we're going to label this as A. I'm going to take a moment around A, and I'm going to set it equal to zero because the object's obviously not going to accelerate or have, have any type of angular acceleration. The beam is just sitting there. So we work to the first one. We come to the 10. The 10 is going to be 1.5 away. So we say 1.5 times 10. Again, we make that positive because that's making it want to rotate this way. We come to this guy here, which in this case is going to be what? 19.6, right? Yeah, 19.6. Um, so I got 19.6 newtons here. So it's going to be minus, and now we go half the distance of the beam, 2.5 times 19.6. Again, we're doing half because the center of mass would be halfway right in here. Okay, now we come to T1. When you come to T1, you only need the vertical component because the horizontal component, assuming this beam has no thickness, goes right through A. And again, that will be positive because T is trying to make it rotate back this way. So T times the sine of the angle, which is 30 degrees. Okay, and then we we'll multiply it by the distance. I'm going to go ahead and just try to grab this a little bit and just slide over to be consistent here because I've been doing the um, distance first. It won't make any difference whatsoever in the mathematics, but I do want to be consistent here. All right, so we say plus, and again, the distance is going to be 3.5 where that tension is going to take place. Okay, we come to the last one. We have another force of 20, and it's going to be 20 times 5. That's going to be negative, so minus 5 times 20. We set that equal to zero, and all we have to do is solve that. And I'll try to run this through my calculator fairly quickly. I'm gonna, so we will have here 15 Newton meters minus 2.5 times 19.6. It's going to give me my, uh, minus 49 Newton meters. And then we'll have, we'll do the 3.5 let me make sure my mode is set right real quickly. It is. So yeah, make sure your modes are your mode and your calculator are set for degrees when you do this. So 3.5 times the sine of 30. That's 1.75. Guess get done that in my head. 1.75 times t minus 100. Again, is equal to zero. Okay, we'll keep this on this side of the equation. 1.75 t is equal to move everything over. That's going to be 100 plus 49 minus 15. So 100 plus 49 minus 15. That gives me 130, 134. So I got 1.75 t is equal to 134. t is going to equal to 134 divided by 1.75. So we just divide that. That gives me 76.57. So 
that's 76.57 newtons. That's the tension that T1 is going to have. Okay, now once you know that tension here, I'll write it right here. It's going to be easy now to find out what the forces are going to be at, at AX and AY. At this point, all I want to do is sum the forces because there's no reason to take another moment. You can, you'll get the right answer, but I'm just going to sum the forces in the X direction and set it equal to zero. Now in the X direction, all I'm going to have will be this one and the horizontal component of this one. So I just do it like this, FAX, and make that positive going to the right, minus 76.57 times the cosine of 30 degrees must equal zero, solve for FAX. And when I do, times the cosine of 30, that gives me 66.31. You know that one there. All right, now to find out what the force in the FAY is going to be right here. Again, we just sum the forces in the y direction. We come over, we say the summation forces in the y, again, they go zero. And the only reason I can say this is because there's no acceleration in the vertical or horizontal. Again, we set that equals zero, and we go through and we look for all the vertical forces. So I got FAY. And one thing to note too, don't spend a lot of time decide, trying to decide whether it goes up or down. Just make a decision, stick with it. You, the math will work it out for you. So now I got 10 newtons going up. And then I got 19.6 coming down. I got the 76.57, but I must multiply that times the sine of 30 to get the vertical component, and then minus 20. That's going to equal zero. So now FAY, see what we got? We're going to have 10 minus 19.6 plus the 76.57 times the sine of 30 minus 20 and that gives me FAY plus 8.69 newtons is equal to zero. We will solve and now look what happens. I had FAY going the wrong direction which is, which is perfectly fine but notice how the math tells me that because I get a negative 8.68 six roughly. I'll just make it 8.69. 8.69. Uh, the reason I'm doing this, I'm just coming right out of the calculator, so I should have just done it right here. 8.69 newtons. So what that means is FAY needs to be going back the other way. It means I have the direction I determined it was going was incorrect. So we got 8.69 newtons. Okay, now to find the actual magnitude the magnitude of the force at A is going to equal to 66.31 squared plus 8.69 squared. And all I have to do is take the square root of that. That will tell me my value. So I take 8.69 squared plus 66.31 squared. I take the square root of that. That gives me a value of 66.88 newtons. Okay, and then we can find the direction we need to. We know the direction it has to go would be back kind of like this. The reason being because it, the x component is going this way. We know the y component is going this way. If I wanted to find out what this angle is going to be here, then all I have to do is take the 8.69 divided by the 66.31, take the inverse tangent, and I can get that angle right there. And I'll go ahead and do that for the heck of it. So I'm going to take 8.69 divided by the 66.31. I'll take second tan, second answer. That gives me a very small angle equal to 7.466 degrees. 
All right, so there's the values. And again, that's the actual value of the net force at FAY. All right, hope this, this problem was very useful to you, I hope. Um, again, you notice when I saw this, the free by diagram was the key to this.